All right, folks, now what we're going to do is we're going to move from fiscal policy into monetary policy. Now, like we've said before, there are two branches to economic policy in the United States and in most developed countries. Um, so monetary policy is the other half. And monetary policy is primarily concerned with the money supply. Now, several lessons ago, we learned about the fact that there is money in the economy. And we talked about the functions of money. Uh, money is like a lubricant that allows the economy to uh, have a lot of activity, to move pretty fast, and allows everybody in the economy to get utility. Okay, It's in the middle of all the transactions. Without money, we are in big trouble. Money is so important that we have an entire uh, organization, an entire institution around managing money and making sure that money is, uh, that the money supply is healthy, that the money process is healthy, that money can be transferred from one institution to another uh, very easily, uh, very efficiently. And that whole process is overseen by one organization called the Federal Reserve System uh, or the Federal Reserve Bank and it all falls under the subject of monetary policy within the economy. So we're going to get a definition here for monetary policy. Monetary policy is the branch of economic policy which manipulates the money supply in a society to regulate the aggregate market and manage the economy. Okay, so we've got a few things going on in here. We know um, that there's a lot of dynamic in the aggregate market. Now, some economic Theories say that you should just leave the aggregate market alone. It'll manage itself. But nowadays, we live in an economic uh, society where we believe it's important to get involved in the aggregate market. And so we're trying to regulate the aggregate market when it's doing something that's sort of either too far high or too far low from where we want to be in terms of production. Uh, and so that's how we manage the entire economy and monetary policy focuses on the only thing that they do in monetary policy, for the most part, is they manipulate the money supply. They increase the money supply. They decrease the money supply. So the money supply is basically very, I mean, it's what it sounds like. It is the number of dollars that are in the economy out there that can be spent. And I'll give you a de definition in, in just a bit. But if you recall... When we talked about fiscal policy, we said that fiscal policy basically has two jobs. They can increase taxes or decrease taxes, or they can increase government spending or decrease government spending. Fiscal policy is all concerned with government spending and taxation, and that is those are the only two levers that they pull. Well, in monetary policy, they really only have one thing they're manipulating, and that is the money supply, the amount of money that is available to be spent. So just to give you an idea, if there was no money in the economy, if they manipulated, if, if, if uh, the powers that be under monetary policy, if they manipulated the money supply so that they reduced the amount of money to zero, so there's no more money in the economy, well, then no one can get paid. I couldn't get paid for my job. I couldn't go buy a burrito at Del Taco. I couldn't go uh, buy a computer. I couldn't get a haircut. You couldn't do any of those things either. So obviously, we don't want to have zero. But if they increase the money supply to the point where there's like, you know, $950 trillion out there in the economy, well, then we'd have a lot of inflation, which we learned about several lessons ago. You know, it would cost $17 just to buy a piece of gum or something like that. And a car would, you know, you'd have to finance a car at, at $675,000, okay? And so uh, the organization that handles monetary policy in most 
countries is called the central bank. And so monetary policy is typically handled by the central bank. And in the United States, it's called the Federal Reserve System. And the actual institution is called the Federal Reserve Bank, or there are Federal, Federal Reserve Banks around the country. Uh, and so sometimes we just call it, we just call it the Fed. So you're going to hear me say the Fed. Whenever I say the Fed, I'm talking about the Federal Reserve System, the organization, the institution in the United States that is our central bank and is responsible for managing the money supply. Now, they do more than just manage the money supply. In fact, you should look into the, uh, the Federal Reserve System, the Federal Reserve Banks. They have a lot of jobs, and I'll talk about them here and there. But, for example, one of the jobs that they have is they, uh, they regulate other banks. Okay, so you got like Bank of America, you have Truist. Uh, which used to be SunTrust and BB&T. Uh, you have Wells Fargo. You have all these banks that, um, you know, you go to the bank and you deposit your money and you can get a loan through the bank. You know, you have your ATM. Uh, it has a, the name of a bank on it. All of these banks, they are managed, overseen, and regulated by the Fed. The Fed tells them whether they can even be a bank. If you had a whole bunch of money and you wanted to go open up a bank, you wanted to start a business, you wanted to be a bank, wherever it is that you are, you would have to get authority from the Fed to be a bank. One of the things that the Fed does is the Fed will oversee mergers of bank. At the time of this recording, right now, BB&T and SunTrust Bank are right in the middle of a merger and they are becoming Truist Bank. And they can't do that unless the Fed says it's okay. They have to put their stamp of approval on the merger of two banks because they regulate all banks. They also have rules for banks. The Fed tells banks what they can do and what they can't do. And if the Fed tells them, you have to do this, that bank has to do it. And if they don't do it, they get in trouble with the Fed. The Fed has a lot of power in the U.S. economy, and all of the banks fall under the oversight of the Federal Reserve System. So we're going to talk a lot about the Federal Reserve, and it makes sense that banks fall under the Fed because the Fed is responsible for the money supply in the economy and where do we bring our money when we want to put it in savings? We bring it to a bank. It's financial intermediation. When we learned about money, it was all about financial intermediation. And since banks are in the middle of these exchanges between savers and borrowers, who's going to oversee the banks to make sure that they're doing right for the people of the economy. Well, that's the Fed. It's the central bank of the country. It's the central bank of the economy. And in the United States, the Fed is the central bank, which is called the Federal Reserve System. Okay? All right. So, uh, first thing I want to say, or the last thing I want to say in this particular segment, is I want to define the money supply, and I want to tell you about the different forms of money that are in the money supply. All right, so the money supply is, it's the amount of money available in an economy for use by households, businesses, and governments. to save or make purchases. And 
There are two basic forms of money that we are going to talk about. Forms of money. Now, before I give you these forms of money, I want you to understand. There are the, one of the things that the central bank does, one of the things that the Fed does is they measure how much money is in the money supply. Uh, and they do this on a regular basis. You can actually look up on the internet. You can find out what, uh, what, how much is in the money supply this month. Um, but the thing is they have different ways of measuring it, different ways. And they've named the different ways. The three main ways that they have, or names or types of measures of money supply uh, are called M1, M2, and M3. I know, really creative, right? And uh, basically, uh, M3 includes M2 and M1. M2 includes M1. And then, so M2 includes M1 plus some other stuff. M3 includes everything in M2, which includes M1, and then some other stuff, okay? But uh, they, the Federal Reserve, they stopped measuring M3 uh, in 2006 because it was so expensive just to measure M3. They were spending money to measure M3, but it wasn't providing them any additional information about the money supply than they already got from M2. And so the only things that they measure anymore right now are M1 and M2, and they report them on the internet. And you can look those up. But basically what's included in M1 and M2 and M3, I'm going to give you two basic forms of money. There's physical money, okay, which we call currency. Currency... Okay, that is physical money. All right, so if you have a dime or a quarter or a nickel, right, that is currency. Okay, I've got here, I've got a $10 bill right here. Okay, this $10 bill, this is physical money. I can take this physically over to a store, buy something that costs uh, $10 or less. They can make change if it's less than $10, right? And I hand them this physical piece of money and then they will give me the stuff. They'll take this as payment. And physical money is called currency, okay? The other kind of money is basically, de you know, digital money that's deposited in your bank account, okay? And we call them deposits in banks. So deposits in banks are the second form of money, and I call those electronic or digital money, okay? And I'll give you an example of that. You probably have a debit card. I'm not gonna let you get too close, but I'll show you, uh, you know, here's my, here's my debit card. And so when I go make purchases, um, I, uh, you know, I put this in the machine. When I wanna buy something, I don't give them any physical money and then they, uh, you know, automatically, electronically move money out of my bank account and into the store's bank account, right? And so that money that I have on deposit in my bank, not physically in my pocket, but the money in my bank account, that is electronic or digital money. And so uh, if you add these two up, all of the currency that's out there in the world, all the coins, all of the green pieces of paper with the little numbers on them, plus all of the deposits in the banks, that basically is what M1, uh, well, M1 includes currency and some of the deposits, M2 includes all of the currency and more of the deposits, and then M3 includes the currency and even more of the deposits. There's basically three levels of deposits based on how big the deposit is and based on how readily available the money is, okay? So the money that I have, whoops, the money that I have in my bank account that I can use right away at a, at a moment's notice that's a part of M1. And so M1 is concerned with all the money that can be used right now today, okay? All right, so that is forms of money, money supply, and monetary policy. This is the subject that we are going to examine for the rest of the semester.